All right, so here is the last session for lesson one. Uh, for these sessions, it's called refine because we basically just review and take over things that we've already learned in the previous lessons. So a lot of this might be reviewed for everyone. For the warm up for today, um, we've got a familiar rectangular prism here that we probably built on our own or at least seen in our workbooks at this point. But um, it wants us to write an addition equation and a multiplication equation for this prism. Now there's a couple different ways you could do it. Uh, the example what, that I'm going to write down is one way. Uh, you'll probably be able to think of some other ways too, but there's usually more than one way to do that for these prisms. But for the addition part, which I'll just do in blue, uh, what I'll do is I'll just kind of separate this top layer here. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So if I have six cubes in one layer and I've got three total layers, uh, I've got one, two, and three. That can be six plus six plus six. And that will be 18 cubic units. And again, if you put U for units, and a three represents cubed because of length times width times height, then you've got it uh, listed properly. Um, but if we look at it another way, We've listed six three times. You could do it another easy way of six times three because you have six per layer, you've got three layers, and you can just multiply and get the same answer. Uh, some of you may have also looked at it like this. Um, you could have nine, so you could have nine plus nine equals 18. And then if you have two slices like that, you could do nine times two. And that gives you 18. So again, just a nice review of what we've been doing already. All right, go ahead and open up your textbooks to page 13, and we'll start taking down some notes. All right, for number one here, it says, um, gives us a little scenario where Eli is stacking unit cubes in a box. Um, he partially fills the box, pauses, and says, the volume of this box is 18 cubic units. Explain how Eli found the volume of the box. So basically what they're asking is, how did Eli know the answer without finishing uh, putting all the unit cubes in the box? So it could be as simple as this. He knew that the bottom layer... Layer is six cubes. So this bottom layer right here, he knows that's six. Even though he like we can't see it in the picture, we know since these blocks right here are are raised up that there must be blocks underneath to hold them up. He can also see once he got this one in there that there were three total layers up top. So he could tell like that six cubes per layer times three layers equals 18 cubic units. So again, sometimes we don't have to necessarily build a complete one uh, to find what the actual volume of this box right here was. Remember, volume is how much something can hold. And unit cubes, in this case, are an easy way to measure that. Later on in science, you'll be able to just add liquids to a container, and then that can help you measure the volume of something just by using liquid. And then, because again, to properly measure volume, you can't have any spaces or gaps or anything like that. So just keep that in mind. And liquid is great for, for ensuring that. All right, number two, Zoe says that the box, that a box that is one unit wide, two units long, and three units tall has a greater volume than a box that's two units wide, two unit, three units long, and one unit tall. Is she correct? Well, let's figure it out. Um, split this question in two sides. Let's put box one on the left and box two on the right. And let's see how this works out for us. Um, so if the first one is one unit wide, that's our width. Two units long, that's our length. And three units tall, that's our height. So we have all three measurements we need for finding the volume. So let's do one times two times three. 
And if we do that, two times one is two, three times two is six. And let's call that, since we're dealing with units still, let's call it that. Um, box two, I'll do this in red. All right, so two units wide, that's the width. Three units long, that's its length. And one unit tall. And let's see. If that's the case for this one, this is also the same amount. So she said that one of the boxes had a greater volume. And we've found out through doing the work here that they actually have the same volume. So um, again, sometimes the measurements will be different for a box, but they may be able to hold the same amount, even though you might have a tall box versus a short one. Uh, think about like when Amazon boxes come in, sometimes those boxes have the same volume, but different shapes. So they are the same. And we also got a nice little preview of, this is the formula for finding volume, which we'll dive into a bit more in the next lesson um, that starts on tomorrow. All right, let's look at number three. All right, each cube in figures A and B has a volume of one cubic unit. All right, so we can just know that for sure. Which figure has less volume, figure A or figure B? Let's figure out the volume. Um, A is pretty simple. Both of these are pretty simple. You can count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Uh, you also could have gone 2 times 5. But either way, that this one is 10 cubic units. This one is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Or you could have gone 3 times 4 and gotten 12 cubic units. So we know that 10 is less than 12. Um, with less than and greater than signs, just remember whichever way the alligator's looking to chomp down is usually the bigger one. So that's why the alligator, little eyes here and some teeth, he's going to munch on this one over here. So this one is the bigger one right there. All right, go ahead and turn the page. All right, now these next two, um, these next two uh, now use 16 blocks, each having a volume of one cubic unit to build a rectangular prism. Draw or build the model to represent the situation. So for this one, if you were in class, we were able to build it with, with the blocks. And um, so we won't really be able to do much in the video for this one. So if you're learning from home or doing the notes because you missed class, then uh, don't worry about this one. But you think you have the general idea. What we will do is move on to number five here. Oh, sorry. Um, I did build some in like Niles did, but I built it with a software program. So these are uh, cubes that each have a volume of 16. Um, you got our, we've got eight, that's two slices of eight to give us 16. And then I've got these layers of four, four layers of four to give me 16. So this is basically eight times two. And this, because you got this slice and there's two of them, and then you got layers here, four times four equals 16. So there's an example. All right, now we'll move on to the last question. All right, um, Heather built a rectangular prism with three layers of unit cubes. Each layer of the prism has 10 unit cubes. Explain why the volume of Heather's prism is said to be 30 cubic units. We don't even have to build this one because uh, all the work's been done for us. Um, so let's underline three layers and underline the phrase, each layer has 10 unit cubes. This is a simple one we can do in our head because we have three layers times 10 layers per cube, and that's where she would get her 30. Again, um, these are fairly simple. I just have to take the time just to visually see or kind of get used to like what they're talking about. Once you're able to see it, sometimes it's easier to understand it. All right, so homework is going to be a little different for this one. Um, in Schoology, you'll find the volume cubes worksheet there. 
Um, and we're, we're going to try to use Kami to answer the questions. If you've not used it before, it's very simple to use. Um, in fact, click on the button that says Open a Lesson with Kami, and you'll be able to put the answers in little text boxes on the sheet. Uh, it's kind of neat how it works that way. And then in the upper right hand corner, you'll see a little box there. You can turn in the assignment. Um, so we'll be working with that. Today's kind of an introduction to use it. Um, days we won't use IXL, we'll probably use Kami with uh, worksheets I've found that will help you out with that. But ask me, uh, get a hold of me with any questions, and I'll be sure to help you out.